What's good, you guys? Punchy here with Punch TCG. Today, I'm going to be bringing you a Cash Tira deck profile. Um, I know that a lot of people might be a little frustrated with the current price of the best deck in the format. And so I just kind of wanted to bring a little bit of, um, you know, a little bit of a spin on the format, something you might be able to play that might be a little more uh, budget friendly. Or if you just don't like the fire decks, this is something that's very anti-meta. Uh, it plays into the fire decks really well while also playing into the other anti-meta options. Uh, plays well into voiceless voice, plays well into branded. Uh, anything you might come across at locals slash regional levels um, and even higher that will very much be able to compete with the, uh, the top tier strategies. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this deck profile. So to start things out, of course, the Cashier engine, you have triple Unicorn, triple Fenrir, and triple Rise Heart. Um, these, you do not want to change at all. You need triple Unicorn, you need triple Fenrir, you need triple Rise Heart. A lot of people are cutting this to two. This card is an amazing extender. This card, uh, going second, can help eat interactions um, because, you know, if you start with a Unicorn or a Fenrir and you hard open the Rise Heart, it's really nice to be able to uh, bait out interactions from your opponent because they may try to uh, stop you from getting here. Um, and then you have further cards to extend from your hand. So it's really nice. It's really consistent. Uh, you definitely, this deck is currently the only reason you may open up a hand that doesn't play very well is because you don't open enough engine. So this card needs to be at three. Um, I would not put this to two. You can test it out if you want to, but I I'm assuming you're gonna come to the same conclusion that I have. Uh, we're on the one, Scareclaw Cash Tira. Um, this card's very good also for extending. Sometimes you hard open it and it's nice if you get asked or impermed on a certain play. Um, it's very good. Uh, as well as the defense effect. This is really good into Pearly, summoning this in defense. Um, and it helps enable the OTK line with only four summons playing under Nib, which is very important right now. We also have the, the one Ogre. Um, I believe Ogre is necessary. It searches you the trap that we're playing. Um, which we'll get to later, but it also has a nice 2800 body. It's water for Theosis. Um, this card is really good to banish off Rise Heart to summon back with Birth. Um, it's a fantastic card. Uh, I, I think you should be playing it. And those are all the names we're playing. Um, so, well, you have 3, 6, 9, 10, 11 names. Uh, and I think that's kind of the sweet spot here with this deck because of a lot of our spells search. Um, so you, you don't really need to play too many more names than this. This is kind of the sweet spot here. And then um, to cap off the monsters, we are only playing Shifter as a monster hand trap in the deck. Uh, Shifter, of course, is the card that beats the meta. This is the card that beats um, Fire Kings. This is the card that beats Snake Eyes. This card beats pretty much everything. This stops every other anti-meta strategy besides maybe uh, what? Um, vo uh, not Voiceless Voice, sorry. Um, Fluanderies and... Um, uh, Pearly can sometimes play through this, but this is just a blowout. This is a turn skip um, against most other decks. So uh, you have to be playing this. Um, you have to be playing this at three. It's just so good. Uh, and that's those are the only monster hand traps we play. This deck can't really afford to play into talents um, going second because going second, if you don't shifter your opponent and you only open like Ash or Bell or something, um, and you're just playing yourself into talents without really turn skipping your opponent, they're gonna rip out the maybe one card starter you had. They're gonna rip out the Fenrir, they're gonna rip out the Unicorn. Um, they might rip out whatever card you had that might be the only card. Cause like post side, sometimes it comes up where like game three, you have one card to play and four or five non-engine cards. And if that one non-engine, non uh, if that one engine card gets stopped, you, you kind of just can't play. So. We don't really want to play into talents too much. Um, and if we do, it's the turn skip. Um, that being said, you could play cards like Ash and Bell. I just would be weary because everybody's playing triple talents right now. And some people are even maining thrusts. Uh, as far as the spell suite goes, we have two Theosis. I don't believe you need three of these. I found myself siding out the third a lot when I was playing three. So I just put main deck to two. Um, it feels good. I don't feel like you need three. Um, this card eats Ash, which is really nice. Uh, hard opening it is good because it, it um, sometimes because it can help play through droll, but I don't believe you need three. I think two is plenty. Um, and it's really good in the grind game when you scare claw, cash tira, banish the theosis to grab back a card, or you can rise heart, banish it. Um, it's really nice. Of course, we're playing triple birth. This is the best card in the deck. Um, this is the card that keeps you in the game. You can end on a board of unicorn Fenrir with a birth and your opponent 
if they can't deal with the birth, they've pretty much lost the game on the crackback. It's so good. This card is not only um, recovery, it's also interruption. A lot of people forget about the banishing three spells from the graveyard face down um, on their spell activation, and they play right into it. And this card is very good at helping disrupt uh, Rescue Ace, helping disrupt Fire King decks. It helps disrupt a lot of decks that need their graveyards to interact. Again, if you don't open Shifter here, um, this card is such a great card to put up going first. Uh, and then, of course, you have the four field spells, the planets and the terraforming. Um, you need to see this card. Opening this card, almost every time I open this card, I go for a Shangri-Era because the Shangri-Era uh, activated effect into uh, Rate Soft pop a card is very strong. It adds an extra layer of interruption that most people forget about. So when you are able to get the Shangri-Era on top of the planet, on top of the birth, even that alone, a lot of times, is enough to just keep you in the game to crack back and kill your opponent. And that's really the, the, the main game plan here with the current iteration of Kashtira. It's to go first, survive turn one, right? This deck's really good at inherently at breaking boards because you get to play so much non-engine. But going first, you just want to survive. You put up a Fenrir, you put up a Unicorn, you put up a Shangri-Era. And sometimes you end on Shangri-Era, Planet, Birth and your opponent draws for turn and they imperm the Shangri ear so you can't bring anything out but they still can't clear it and the birth and you're just chilling it's really nice um so those are the cast Tira spells that we play uh next we go through the triple pot of prosperity i mean this is one of the best cards in the game it's good at going first it's good at going second um you do not really need your extra deck in this deck besides for like a few cards most games um, so this card is just amazing. You can, I, I've oftentimes resolved this card fully twice in a match and have had, so like, you know, you activate Prosperity, you banish six, um, turn two or three comes around, you Prosperity again for another six, you'll have maybe one uh, or two cards left in your extra deck, but you just don't care because resolving this, getting back into Birth or Unicorn is just so strong. Uh, we are playing the Call By, a lot of people on Droll right now. Uh, a lot of people on Valor, a lot of people on Ash, a lot of people on Bell. Bell actually hurts Birth a lot, especially if you're going for the Heat Soul line. Um, getting Bell on the Birth hurts a lot. Called By is just really nice to have. Not to mention this card's really good going second into the Fire decks. Banishing the Princess is very nice, so we're playing that. Uh, as well as the two Talents and the two Thrust. Um, I think Thrust is an absurd card right now, as well as Talents. Most people are playing three. I would be playing three if I wasn't also playing the two thrusts. Um, these cards are amazing right now. Um, we play, and I'll show you in a minute, we play a lot of targets for thrusts in the main deck, both going first and going second, including talents, including prosperity, including theosis. There's just so much that talent, that thrust makes live in this deck. And it's just an extra copy. The, the two thrusts is essentially four copies of talents going second if you really need to see talents because talents into the fire decks going second is absolutely a blowout um so we love that and this card is absurd in the game right now but i think cash tira among all decks makes best use out of this card because a lot of your cards are um like theosis just being able to inherently grab theosis from your main deck is really good into a board um even being able to like there are a lot of times where i thrust i'll bait out a baron and then I'll thrust into a terraforming, activate planet, and my opponent will just scoop because it, it, it's it's game from there. Um, uh, more spells we're playing. Duster, this is a, another thrust target in the main. This is essentially three copies of Duster going second. Um, it's really strong. And then again, we have the prosperity to search it out again. You have talents to draw to if that's what you're doing. We're not usually drawing two in this deck because we're usually prosperity locked and, um, but the, the Duster is so strong. This card is really good into a lot of decks right now. This card is really good into Voiceless Voice. It's really good into Branded. It's um, semi-decent into the Fire Decks. It's okay. Um, not, the, not the most amazing card into the Fire Decks, but on top of all your other interruptions and interactions, uh, this card does help out a lot. And then for the last three spells, we are playing three Enemy Controller. This card is fantastic right now. It is, again, it is good going first. It is good going second. And I believe that having those cards that are both good going first and second is so important uh, in terms of spells. If you haven't noticed, again, we're playing three main deck monster hand traps um, and the rest are board breakers uh, because I think you need that strong or that nice sweet spot between board breakers and hand traps. It's just so powerful. Um, this card is really good going second 
as well as going first, going second. You can steal the Appaloosa your opponent makes. You can steal the uh, the Ambler Whale. Um, it's really good for interrupting different Fire King lines on your turn, as well as going first, setting this card face down and ending on like maybe Fenrir Unicorn is amazing because you burn the Fenrir or Unicorn effect. They're now useless on your board. Um, and all you need is an enemy controller and you basically just get to send the burned out Fenrir or the burnt out uh, Unicorn to now steal another one of your opponent's monsters. It's super strong, not to mention it clears your board for your follow-up. So if you're ending on maybe the Heat Soul line and you've got like a Draco sack or a Heat Soul and you need to clear it off the board so you can special summon a Unicorn from your hand on the follow-up, you contribute that card off the field, then your opponent, uh, then you take your opponent's monster and it leaves at the end phase and now your board is clear, you're good to special Unicorn or special Fenrir and just go off. Um, this card is fantastic and uh, as well, a, a nice point of interaction with this card going first is against the Hita line. Um, going second, the Fire King decks, or the, the Snake Eyes decks in general, they'll make Hita as a way to uh, extend through interruptions and interactions and this card is really good um if you can wait for the hita go into this um and then go crazy because you play you do play cards that that play into hita you do play the rise heart you do play the shangri era um so them going into hita and then you take the hita with the enemy controller is usually a huge choke point for them and most people aren't expecting this in the main deck let alone the side deck uh, a few people are you know at the top level people will be ex expecting to play into enemy controller at some point but most of the time people just assume you have a set uh, face down imperm. And even if they know it's econ, like you grab it off the prosperity. In testing, I've been I've been grabbing econ off prosperity and uh, my opponent will know that I have it, but there's nothing they can do about it. And it just kind of clears the game. So it's really nice. Those are our spells. The, the main deck is a good chunk of spells. Um, and games two and three, you do side out spells for more hand traps. So you're not playing into anti-spell as hard, but the, um, the other cards we play, our triple imperm. This is the only other main deck hand trap we play. Again, like I said, we want to play a lot of board breakers and a nice, I, I like to call it the Goldilocks zone. It's it's that nice sweet spot of, of board breakers plus hand traps. Uh, and this doubles as both. Um, a lot of times you're holding this, uh, going second against Snake Eyes. If it's your only point of interruption, uh, sometimes you hold it. Uh, you know, if you know they can extend past the Snake Eye Ash effect, um, you can hit the Flamberge on your own turn to stop the IP from coming out. Um, it's really nice. I think Imperm is an incredible card right now and it doesn't play into talents, which again, we're, we're really trying not to do. Uh, we do play the preparations uh, to search off of the Ogre. This card is phenomenal. Um, this plus birth, you're getting that set up. Your opponent's likely not beating both. It's very nice. It's very strong. It is infinite follow-up on top of the birth. Plus into Labyrinth, this card is fantastic. A lot of people forget about the effect that this card, when your opponent activates a trap while this is face up, you just get to rip a card out of their hand. So when they go big welcome, summon a monster, bounce a monster, you just get to rip that monster. They just bounce the hand right out of it. Uh, it's very, very strong. Um, this card is fantastic. It's also really good in the rescue ace with the contain and the extinguish. Um, you just get to rip whatever uh, they may have added off their quick plays uh, with this card. It's really nice. And then the last card we're playing, this is card number 40 uh, for Thrust. This is Karma Cannon. Um, this card I've been debating whether or not it's good again this format. I do. I do think it's really good. I don't think that the Fire decks play through it very well. Um, again, that's just my testing. This could change, but I do really like this card. Um, it, it's okay into Voiceless Voice, but our engine inherently beats Voiceless Voice anyway. We're trying to beat fire kings and snake eyes above all else and this card it's hard for them to play through this the choke points are pretty um pretty signaled in those decks and so this this card is really good against it um so that is the main deck it is 40 cards nice and sweet and simple and next we will go into the extra deck uh again this this is pretty cookie cutter extra deck um we'll go through the xes first we're playing dark arm this is probably the most summoned extra deck card this is an incredible card it baits out every interruption and if your opponent doesn't have the interruptions to play through this card like if you can bait everything out that they had and then you summon this card it is phenomenal it just breaks the whole board and your opponent cannot recover from it it's not once per turn so you pop two and for those who don't know you detach a card from this you pop a card on your opponent's side of the field not once per turn and then you banish a card from your graveyard so you can um detach a monster detach castier monster and then banish it 
and then detach another card to pop another card and then banish the theosis that you might have in your graveyard to add a Kashira card back uh, from your banished. Uh, it's really powerful, it's really strong. Um, the fact that it interacts with uh, Theosis being banished so well is really cool. Uh, you play the Red Eyes Flare Metal. There are a lot of times where you leave your opponent on just a thousand or so life points or end of time. This card's really good. Uh, this card has actually won me quite a few games. I really like it. Draco Sack. Um, this card's really good at outing Floodgates. It outs Skill Drain. It outs everything else. On top of that, it, it, it enables the, um, the Heat Soul line, which is really good. Uh, so we play this card. Um, yeah, it's just really good. Playing the Big Eye. Uh, big eye is big eye going second. This card baits out interruptions just like Dark Armed here. Um, this is probably the second most summoned card in the extra deck going second. Very strong. It's always really good. This on top of enemy controller, um, just stealing monsters from your opponent and plus talents is like, this card is amazing. Um, then we're playing the Shangri Era. This is what you end on if you're ever going to the extra deck and making the next season turn one. It's Shangri Era. This card's really good. Again, if you draw a planet, this is usually what you go into. Uh, the Typhon and the Zeus. Uh, Typhon is kind of useless in this deck. I'm not gonna. Be, I'm not gonna lie to you. Zeus is amazing. Zeus is Zeus. You don't summon it as often as you think you would. Um, but Typhon is honestly pretty useless in this deck. You don't have to play this card if you don't have um, the money to shell out on Typhon. Don't worry about it. it this card is uh, the weird part about this card with Kashira is when you have to play it live and you're getting all those attack boosts. This card goes over 3,000 attack, which then negates its own effect, so it can't even activate. Um, and you have Planet a lot of the times because everything in your deck searches. So you always have Planet live. Uh, more than half your game's Planet are li is live. And then if you summon this on top, its attack is always going over 3K, and then it's useless. You can't even use it. Um, so I've, I've maybe made this card once or twice. Again, you do not need this, so do not fret if you cannot afford the Typhon. You really don't need it. Um, and those are the Xyz that we play. Uh, you can play Gradial too. I was playing Gradial for a while. I switched it out for another card, which I'll show you. I just don't think it's very useful. It's maybe good against tier limits going first. If you don't draw Shifter or any other graveyard disruption, you can summon Gradial. Um, but I don't know. I, I made it zero times, so I just kind of cut it. Um, and then again, we are playing the Heat Soul line. So Double Link Spider, the Golem, the Heat Soul. Um, this, this line's really good, actually. If you don't draw any non-engine in your opening hand, you can go for this line. It plays in a nib, which you have to be careful about. So this is usually a game one move. Uh, put your opponent, if they don't have nib, you kind of win. This card's really good, bumps its attack up really high. Uh, so into the rescue ace matchup, when they summon, um, I forget the name of the card, it's either Impulse or Airlifter, the one that negates the highest attack monster on the field. When you have this card on the board, plus the uh, the IP or the Shangra or the Draco Sack pointing to it, it's at 3,300 attack. So that this is the monster that has to get negated for that. So that's really nice. Uh, it also draws you into your interruptions. It draws you into your enemy controllers, your imperms. Post side, if you're deciding to play into Nib for some crazy reason, draws you into Ash, Bell, whatever you might be siding in. Uh, this is what I replace Gradial with is the Donner Dagger for higher. Um, because Nib is in the format, if you do happen to play into it, you can clear it with the Donner, uh, which is really nice. There are also times where maybe you end on uh, a card that's not a cashier monster or does not extend you into your plays on the crackback, and this is just really good at clearing it, plus it's a pop. It's just a nice card. I find myself um, liking this security blanket way more than the Gradial, so that's why I play it. And the next three cards, um, again, not cards you need to play. It's the Little Knight and the IP. I do find myself making IP a lot. It's probably the most summoned Link monster besides Little Knight, of course, in the extra deck. If you cannot afford the Little Knight, do not worry about it. It's Little Knight is not the reason this deck is good. It's not the reason this deck wins games. It's just um, there are moments where no card in the game does what Little Knight does. And so if you can't afford to play it, you should. Um, but if you don't want to shell out $150 for this card, I understand you don't need to. Um, but it is, it is a little night and you do, um, at the, at the highest level of play, I, I would recommend it. Um, this card plays IP very well. If you don't lock yourself with Theosis or Rise Heart and you can get into IP with the birth to summon back the Fenrir or IP with Shangri Era, it's very strong, very, very powerful. Um, if I don't draw planet, if I, uh, or have access to planet for the Shangri pop, I like to make IP cause I think it's a nice point of interaction. Uh, with the little knight with two banishes and then the baron i know i don't play any level three monsters uh tuners in the main deck but in the side deck i do so this card is for lack of a better extra deck card to play we play baron um but going second or games two and three sorry 
this is this card is nice to have because we are playing level three tuners in the side deck. So this card's really good at stopping if your opponent's playing evenly or if your opponent's playing board breakers, this card is what you would use to stop it. Um, so that's why that's there. Uh, and that is it for the extra deck. And lastly, we will go into the side deck. This is not as, um, this is, you know, this is, side decks are the, the most ever-changing cards in your 55 that you'll play. And it's very locals dependent. It's very regionals dependent. It's very event dependent. Um, so take this side deck with a grain of salt. This is just what I play with my testing group, with my locals, uh, and with my personal like regional location. This is These are the cards that I feel are best, um, so that's why I play these. Uh, we're playing Triple Droll. We're not main decking these. Again, we don't want to play into talents if we don't have to. Plus, it conflicts with Shifter a little bit. This is what you, you side in. You side out Shifter, you side in Droll against Flu. And other decks that Droll does kill enough, you side this in even with Shifter because you want to see one or the other. Um, because the thought process is you want to turn skip um, when it's not your turn on Kashtira. And plus, some decks don't care about Droll as much, but if you layer it with under interruptions, they do care about Droll. So it's a really good card in the side deck. Um, I've thought about mating it. We'll see how the format ends up shaping up, which Snake Eyes deck is the best variant uh, if they play into Droll or not. And, th and so that could change. Um, they were playing the Triple Ash and the Triple Bell. Um, you want to beat Branded. This is OTK against Branded. You want to beat Lab. These are really good against Lab. Both of these hit Wanted. Uh, Bell is an incredible card right now. I think it needs to be somewhere in your 55, whether it's main or side, this card needs to be somewhere. Um, and these both enable Baron to be live. So um, these cards are both incredible. I would be main decking Ash, but the problem with Ash right now is that um, this card enables Hita on your opponent's turn. And you don't want them to necessarily, like let's say you Ash something and they just go Hita and then make uh, Promethean Princess and then their combo is live. Um, so it does turn on an interaction. I do think this card is good enough to play to warrant turning on that interaction, um, at least in the side. Um, but yeah, this is the, these are cards. If you main deck either of these ones, I wouldn't be surprised and I wouldn't blame you. Um, and then on top of that, we have Triple Cosmic. Uh, you want to pair this with Duster because this card is really good against Fire Kings. This card is really good against Voiceless Voice. Um, this card is really good against anything really right now. This card is honestly main deck worthy. Uh, I wouldn't blame you if you decided to main deck it. Um, I really like it. This card outs anti-spell, which we sometimes hard lose to anti-spell. So we're playing this card. And then to cap it all off is the dimensional fissure. Um, th it was between this and summon limit. And I just felt like this was more of a blowout going first than summon limit is. There are a lot of times where, um, game three you just you're going first or game two you're going first and this card will will actually just win you the game in testing um i will put up a small board i will activate dimensional fissure knowing that i don't need to extend too many of my resources because this card takes care of the messes and my opponent will literally look at me and be like yeah i just can't play through the d fissure so that is the main extra inside deck um so that is my current cash tier list. If you guys uh, have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. But this is how I am breaking the meta right now. This is a list I've been playing with a lot against friends, taking it to locals a lot. Um, I really like the list. I like cash tier. Some people don't think it's very fun. Um, I think winning is fun. I think turn skipping with shifter is very fun. Uh, I know some people hate that, but I like it. I quite like it. Uh, I quite like this deck. So thank you guys for watching and we'll catch you in the next video. Peace.